Yo, it's the Casual Cube, and in this video we're going to be doing a little cube study on the Cube Starter from Card Kingdom. And if you don't know what this is, it's um, it's not necessarily a sealed product. It is from a third party. It's not directly from Wiz Wizards of the Coast, but uh, you know, I think it's a pretty cool product because if you're, I guess it's mainly geared towards people who are just getting back into Magic and they kind of sold off their collection and maybe they just want um, kind of like a cube for, you know, their at-home drafts, and I don't know. I just don't really see it kind of being towards a brand, brand new player, like someone who's just starting to get into Paper Magic, like maybe from like a MTG Arena or something. Uh, but I still think it's a great idea and a, and a really cool product because if you are in the market for a cube, I think this might be the best um, intro product into cube. Um, now, obviously for me, me personally, I think, you know, building your own cube you know, slowly but surely collecting cards. I think that's the best way because, you know, I think it's just more fun, it's more personal. But in this case, if you are someone who, like I said, maybe you sold your collection and maybe you just want to casually play at home, um, I think this is a great product. And for $100, um, you know, I'm sure there's tax and shipping, but, uh, you know, uh, and another thing I want to say is that I'm not, you know, sponsored by Card Kingdom or anything. I'm just simply looking at this product um, and honestly, I'm just kind of like, uh, looking at it as a template, uh, kind of see what the cube design is. And, and, and in their case, uh, in, in Card Kingdom's eyes, I think they're kind of just not necessarily dumping bad cards. They're just, you know, kind of compiling all of these cards, um, that are, you know, they're relatively low in, um, in value, but, uh, as far as a cube goes, it's definitely a playable product. And, you know, I've already looked at the cards and it looks like a really cool introductory cube, uh, but, you know, they're just essentially just, you know, putting a bunch of cards together and they create essentially a great starter cube, um, in my opinion, because, you know, you get all these basic lands, you get 35 of each basic land. Uh, it's a 360 card cube. Um, there's some rares in there, but like I said, they're pretty, pretty much low value rares, but that's okay. I mean, it's, you're not, you're not you shouldn't expect something of high value in this cube. Um, you know, you get two custom cube, uh, boxes, Card Kingdom blue boxes. I think they're just, uh, cardboard boxes that hold all the cards, but, um, you do get a complete set of ultra pro sleeves, which I think is cool. Um, and over here on the right, uh, the version six, that's, you know, this little cutout is directly from, uh, Card Kingdom's website, so hopefully they don't update it to version 7 when I upload this video, that would be pretty uh, hilarious, but um, let's actually look at the cube and, and let's see what's what's going on in here. So, um, like I said before, this is simply just a kind of a cube study for myself. Um, you know, I do have a bunch of new Guilds of Ravnica cards that I want to throw in here, uh, but yeah, let's get into the creatures, and if, if we're looking at Mono White's there's a lot of cool things in, in um, as far as the cube design. Uh, well, if you're building your own cube, if you want to build your own cube, uh, I definitely think you want to have uh, White Weenie as an archetype. And if you haven't been watching the Pro Tour lately, um, it's kind of been making a. Uh, I think it well, it did win. It was like a, a mono white with a little bit of splash red uh, that that won the Pro Tour. Um, but anyways, as far as cube design, you definitely want to have your fair share of one drops as far as white, so you can have that white wing archetype. And if you look over here, you know, there's uh, some Guild of Ravnica cards. Um, Alright, and continuing with the two drops for white, we got things like Fencing Ace, Stonehaven Outfitter, uh, if you want to go with the equipment, Auras, um, I guess, if you want to include that as an archetype. You know, some, uh, you know, you got a, you got a Stormfront Pegasus over here, a 2-1 Flyer. Silver Chase Fox, if you want to destroy enchantments, so there's some uh, cool cool things going on here as far as two drops. Uh, three drops over here, we got some more flyers, some first strikers. I really like this Kemba uh, Ka Regent. Um, at the beginning of your upkeep, create a 2-2 two, two white cat creature token for each equipment attached to Kemba, so that, you know, archetype is kind of you know, along with Danatha over here, and, and uh, you know, I, you can definitely see equipment auras being a thing uh, as far as this cube. We got the Rock Charger, Pegasus Courser, you know, gives flying uh, whenever it attacks uh, to an ally creature as well. Blinding Soul Eater, which I also have on my cube, just because I think it's kind of an interesting control card if you want to go late into the game, tap their biggest creature. You can also use life. Um, 
so yeah, just uh, kind of an interesting uh, choice of three drops for white. Going into four drops, we got Baird. If you want to go more of a control build, uh, we got the Tokens, Gallant Calvary, um, Inspiring Unicorn, which I think is a great card as far as draft for Guilds of Ravnica. Um, going into the five drops, um, uh, the Geist Honored Monk is kind of interesting. Uh, the Regal Caracol, um, you know, I don't know how, how many cats are in this, uh, but... You know, as just by itself, it creates you know two one one cat creature tokens, so they become two twos. Um, so yeah, I mean it, it's a uh, it's kind of interesting design as far as the five drop. The six drops over here, um, you know, we got Lena, selfless champion. So if you do go kind of uh, the wide uh, strategy, you know, you create a one one creature to uh, soldier token for each non token creature you control. So that's kind of interesting, uh, but you know. For a 6-drop, you get a 3-3 three, three body. Eh, I'm not really sure. This Noble Templar, uh, you'll, you'll see in, in as far as the other colors, uh, there's a lot of cycling. The plain cycling and the, you know, the, you can you know discard these cards at your library for that color uh, card. So that's kind of interesting. But, you know, I think uh, there, there could definitely be some more exciting things as far as the top end of, of you know, white and even the other colors. And you'll see that. Uh, as far as non-creatures, let's move on into kind of the the one drops for non-creature spells so we got things like um you know moment of triumph little combat tricks uh you know swords to plowshares which i think is pretty amazing exile any target creature its controller gains life equal to its power so you can immediately exile the biggest creature on the opponent's board um you know some interesting things over here some combat tricks some more combat tricks going on into the two drops um, you know, we got things like pacifism over here. If you want to have a little bit more control, baffling ends. Um, yeah, some token generators. Um, you know, we got a, a saga over here with triumph of Gerard. Spirit bonds over here is a little bit text heavy, but it's essentially just a kind of like a like a token uh, protection thing. Well, yeah, if you do, yeah, do, do, do. yeah. So it's kind of interesting design. Um, spirit bonds, but. Yeah, mainly there's, uh, you know, some combat tricks, token generators, invoke the divine over here, light form, which I'm not really a big fan of the manifest mechanic, but that's just me personally, um, you know, because when I'm, as far as me designing my own cube, I'm trying to build it to be very beginner friendly, so it's not uh, incredibly text heavy or, you know, confusing, and I think ma manifesting cards is kind of a confusing mechanic. Uh, same with morph, uh, I think morph is a little bit you know, just a little bit too much for the beginner. Like, literally someone who's never played Magic. Um, Battle Mastery over here, though, is, is kind of cool. Give uh, Enchanted Creature a double strike. Uh, we got called Calvary as far as four drops. More token generators. Uh, Conclave Tribunal, which is a great uh, exile card. Hyromancer's Cage, another exile removal. On Sarah's Wings, um, you know, as far as the, the Enchantment Aura's archetype. Kind of interesting. Uh, we got Fumigate as far as, you know, some board sweepers, Planner Outburst, another board sweeper. And this one has an interesting mechanic as well where it turns one of your lands into a uh, elemental creature, which I think is kind of interesting if you you have to pay the, the waking costs, though. So, yeah, you have to... <laughs> it's kind of a, what, eight, eight mana? Yeah, so that's kind of interesting. All right, now looking at blue creatures, there's less creatures... As far as blue, um, there's a little bit more non-creature spells, and you'll see that in a second here. As far as creatures, though, we have things like um, Night Veil Sprite, Omen Speaker for the control decks to kind of control their draws. Um, we have, you know, a little bit of aggro with the Welkin Turn and the Departed Deckhand, some built-in uh, evasion for those aggro decks. Going into the three drops, we have, you know, some token generators. We have a little bit of a little bit of control with uh, like Frost Links and Mana War. Um, we also have, you know, a Seagate Oracle over here with uh, some card draw. Going into the four drops, we have, you know, Murmuring Mystic, which has been a kind of an all star for Guilds of Ravnica drafts, kind of a win condition. Every time you use an instant or sorcery, you create a 1 1 a flying illusion token. Um, we also have, you know, uh, Archaeomancer, which, you know, is kind of interesting for one, two, you get your uh, target instant or sorcery from your graveyard back into your hand. Um, Argent Sphinx over here is kind of an interesting design. Uh, anytime it becomes targeted, 
if you have enough artifacts, you have to control three, uh, you can exile it. So essentially, if it becomes targeted by a, a spell, you know, like a lightning bolt, deals three damage to it, you can pay the one blue if you control three artifacts, and you can exile the Argent Sphinx, and it's uh, essentially the flicker effect where, uh, you know, the lightning bolt, after it resolves on the stack, after your Argent Sphinx is exiled, and it returns back onto the battlefield, um, the lightning bolt will actually lose its target. And those kind of flicker effects are kind of interesting design uh, things because they kind of protect uh, whatever you need to protect from, you know, lightning bolts or any kind of removal. Or if you want to y use a flicker effect for an enter the battlefield effect, such as, you know, Tower Geist um, over here where, you know, it enters the battlefield, look at the top two cards of your library, put one of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard. So let's say, like, uh, in white, there's a flicker effect in white. Um, things like Cloud Shift or whatever, which essentially does what Argent Sphinx does, but, you know, you can use it on another creature and, you know, protect it or, you know, trigger another Enter the Battlefield effect or something like that. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of interesting design. As far as five drops over here, I'm not a big fan of the Mnemonic Wall, simply because, yeah, you do get your instant or sorcery back, but it's a 0-4 uh, body, and it's a defender for five mana, which, I don't know, I mean, you... I think you'd want to, like, maybe something like a 2-2 two -two or something as opposed to a 0-4 defender. But maybe, you know, I haven't never played with it, so maybe it's the bee's knees, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, Watcher in the Mist over here, it's kind of a Guilds of Ravn Ravnica all-star, you know, the 3-4 flyer with a surveil effect built in. Um, going on into the 6 drops, we got the Horizon Scholar, 4-4 four -four flyer with Scry 2. And then we got the Shoreline Ranger, which is another one of those cycling cards where you can discard it for 2 mana and search your library for any uh, island card. But uh, as far as the stats itself, for 6 mana, 3-4 flyers, you know, very meh. But uh, yeah, let's go into the non-creatures. We have some interesting things over here. Oh, yeah, we have 30 non-creature spells. Um, we have things like Diminish. Uh, it's kind of a combat trick, which reduces you know any target to a 1-1, one -one, so it makes it easier to block. Um, you know, things like Opt, where we can control our draws, Unsummon, and Silent Departure, which is a little bit more kind of like a tempo effect. Um, and moving on to the two drops, we have a lot going on over here, but we have a lot of control spells, a lot of counter spells, uh, you know, we have the, the quintessential counter spell, we have things like Essence Scatter, Negate, Syncopate, uh, as far as uh, counters, um, we have, you know, some, uh, some card draw, Radical Idea, Think Twice, which, essentially, they just kind of cycle themselves, but, you know, if you need to trigger an effect such as Murmuring Mystic, where you know you can generate tokens from your instants or sorceries, or or whatever. Um, you know, think twice. Radical ideas in there. We have things like fumble, blink of an eye for a little bit of control. Um, so yeah, kind of interesting two drops. As far as three drops over here, we have you know more counter spells, uh, exclude, unwind, cancel. Um, you know, again, here's we have another flicker effect, ghostly flicker, where we can exile two target artifact creatures or lands. So, mainly, you're probably going to be using it only on creatures, though, because, you know, say there's that lightning bolt or whatever removal spell is targeting one of your creatures, you can ghostly flicker at instant speed, they leave the battlefield, and they come back, and if they have it entered the battlefield effect, it triggers again, and, you know, after all of that resolves off the stack, you know, whatever that removal spell is will lose its targets because it was exiled, it was flickered. Um, so, that's kind of interesting. We got a quasi-duplicate, uh, deep freeze for control. Um, again, this cloud form, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the manifest mechanic. That's just me personally as far as my cube design. Uh, but, you know, we do have a, an extra manifest card in here. Um, moving on into the four drops, you know, we got some cool stuff. Bone to Ash, uh, Chemistry's Insights, um, you know, Time of Ice, which is an interesting saga control card. Um, we have, uh, yeah, we have some more card draw. Um... Yeah, we have Kefnet's Last Word, which is interesting. You can gain control of any target uh, artifact, creature, or enchantment. Uh, but on your next turn, your lands do not untap. So I think that's kind of interesting design. Um, moving on, we have Patient Rebuilding. Uh, it doesn't seem like uh, Mill is an archetype in this in this cube, but um, yeah, I mean it's just a good you know secondary win condition, and also um, yeah, you can also draw more cards if they discard a land. Uh, we have Primordial Mist in here, which is, yeah, another manifest card, but, you know, 
Uh, yeah, put do 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 exile on face. Do do do. Yeah, yeah. So uh, me personally, I'm I'm not a I'm not a big fan of the manifest mechanics. Just for me, uh, as far as my cube, but you know we we do have it in this cube. Moving on, we have, uh, you know, in Bolus's clutches, which you, you gain control of target permanent. Um, supplant form, so if they have a big creature that comes down on the battlefield, you can return it back into their hand, and then you generate a token of it. So that's kind of interesting design. Uh, now let's move on into black. So for black, we have 30 creatures, and we're going to move on into the one drops. A little bit of aggro going on in the in the you know black archetype over here. We have uh, you know maybe a black aggro deck that could be built with vampire lacerator, diagraph ghoul, um, you know the tenacious dead, uh, you know some some decent one drops over here. Going on to the two drops, we have you know things like uh, child of night. Uh, we have the sacrifice archetype built in with the doom dissenters and the reassembling skeletons, uh, the dust legion zealots. You know these small. Um, creatures that could easily be sacrificed. Uh, Carrier Thrall generates a token. So kind of interesting. Um, you know, Scrap Heap Scrounger over here, I know it's an ar artifact, but as far as Cube Tutor goes, when I was looking at the Cube Tutor, um, it did consider this a black card simply because of the, the you know, spend one and uh, one black for the exile another target creature from your graveyard to return it. And I do think, you know, as far as that sense, you do need to splash black if you're really going to utilize this card, but you know, essentially you can, you know, use Scrap Heap Scrounger in any deck if you wanted to, just as a 3-2 blocker in your aggro deck or whatever, uh, or a 3-2 aggro creature that can't block. Um, but we have, you know, Knight of Malice, uh, you know, Gnawing Zombie over here, sacrifice a creature, target player loses one life and you gain one life, maybe that can be used as a finisher. Um, so yeah, we have the, the Sacrifice archetype built into black, um, yeah, so, you know, Death Bloom, Death Thalid, uh, you know, we got some some interesting things over here, Frexian Rager, Plague Mare, Ravenous Harpy, again, the, the Sacrifice uh, Black Archetype is in here. Um, yeah, I really like Ventral Rebel, when it enters the battlefield, it you know, has the Revolt, so if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn, target creature and opponent controls gets negative three, negative three. So essentially, if you, you know, maybe one of your creatures got killed, or, you know, you attacked into something, and, you know, that creature got killed... You can, you know, play Vengeful Rebel, destroy a uh, three toughness creature on their board. Um, we have Vampire Aristocrat, sacrifice creature, target, uh, you know, Vampire Aristocrat gets plus two, plus two, so you can use that as a combat trick. Um, yeah, so moving on to the four drops. Um, do, do, do. Yeah, so, some more, you know, sacrifice mechanics. Um, not a big fan of Whisper, simply because you got to sacrifice two creatures, which I think is pretty heavy, because unless you're, like, bringing back a, you know, ginormous creature from your graveyard to the battlefield, I just don't think it's worth it for a four-mana 2-2 two -two body. Uh, but, you know, that sacrifice archetype is in the deck. Um, under City Necrolisk, uh, you know, get that plus one, plus one counter at least, but you also get the Menace. Um, so, yeah, moving on to the five drops, more sacrifice with Fallen Angel. Um... Yeah, I think Guilt Leaf Winnower is kind of an interesting uh, card. You know, it's five mana, four three menace, but you know when you could potentially destroy a target creature whose power and toughness aren't equal. Very very specific uh, removal, but you know it is removal. Um, Priest of Blood Rite, which I think is awesome, five mana for two two, but it generates a five five flying demon. Um, yeah, it, it would really be unfortunate though if you had your demon removed and then. You know, you had something like a Luminous Bonds or something, or like a Pacifism on Priest of the Blood Rite, and you just kept on losing two life at the beginning of your upkeep, so... But that, you know, that's I really like this card. Um, and Yargle, which is a 9-3 for 5 mana, which, you know, can't go wrong with the Yargle. And going on into the 6 drops, you know, we have that Cycling card again. Uh, in this case, you know, 6 mana for a 5-3. Three. 3 Toughness Creature for, for 6 mana play is not really that good, but you can regenerate this card, so... Uh, it's, you know, kind of interesting. But again, it follows that theme of including all of those uh, cycling cards. Now, going on into non-creatures, we have 20 non-creatures for black. And yeah, we have some cool things in here. We have Dark Ritual, um, we have Supernatural Stamina, Disfigure, Dead Weight, um, Unearth. So yeah, some really cool one mana plays for black. Um, yeah, continuing on, we have Diabolic Edict, Sign in Blood, um, 
yeah, Deadly Designs, which I think is an interesting design. Um, yeah, what to do, do? Yeah. <laughs> um, vicious Offering, Ultimate Price, Severed Strands. So, yeah, a lot of removal. Murder, uh, Mephitic Vapors, Mind Rot for the three mana plays. Uh, Viscerate, Dark Bargain, Ride of Belzenok. So, again, as you can see, you know, just good, solid, uh, well-balanced design, as far as my opinion. You know, we have removal, some card draw, a unique effect for the sacrifice archetype for, uh, you know, with the right of Belzenok, you're generating uh, zero one one creature tokens that can be sacrificed. Um, and then we have Consume the Meek, so not a lot of board sweepers, but I like that with cubes. I, I like, you know, having, you know, very sparse board wipes. You want those board wipes to feel very powerful, and having too many of them could be detrimental to the design of the cube. As far as this goes, though, we have Consume the Meek, and, you know, destroy each creature with converted mana cost 3 or less. They can't be regenerated, so it's very specific toward against aggro, but, um, you know, it's, it's another board sweeper for the, for the cube. Alright, so moving on to the red creatures. We have 28 red creatures. And again, this kind of follows with the white um, white weenie. We have the red aggro archetype, so there's going to be a lot of one drops. Um, you know, we have things like Goblin Banner Ray. We have some two ones, like the Fire Drinker Seder and the Jackal Pup. Um, we have a very powerful Bomat Courier over here, which has been kind of a, a great, as far as the previous standard goes, a great one drop. But, you know, as far as cube goes, I think it's also going to be a great one drop. Um, just because it has so much going on for it, you can refill your hand essentially. Um, but yeah, let's uh, yeah, some you know we we have some goblin sacrifice over here. Um, yeah, so maybe goblins could be a thing in this cube. Um, yeah, moving on, we have the champion of the flame. So we have that you know enchantment aura archetype that that could be potentially in the cube. Um, we have this two mana three three the mog flunkies, which I, I really like for the aggro archetype. Um, you know, we have, you know, Torch Fiend, uh, if you want to go Tokens, or the Sacrifice, you can go Goblin Instigator, um, yeah, we have Dismissive Pyromancer, Goblin Crater Maker, uh, that can affect the board by using their abilities. The three drops are interesting as well, we have, you know, some aggro three drops on Crop Crasher, um, you know, the Bogar Brute is a good aggro card with a built-in menace. We have, you know, if you wanted to go, the spells, uh, maybe is it spells, the blue, uh, red spells, you can, you know, take that gutter snipe. Um, yeah, we have Valduck over here, which I think is kind of cool. So yeah, some uh, some interesting three drops. Moving on to the four drops, uh, this Manticore I really like. Uh, yeah, you have to sacrifice another creature, but yeah, it deals damage equal to that creature's power. Uh, to target a creature or player, and you can also embalm it, which I think is interesting. Um, you know, the Volley Veteran, I think, is one of the few payoffs for playing goblins in the deck, so maybe if you do buy this cube, you can improve it with something like a Goblin Trash Master, uh, or maybe some other Goblin Lords. Um, you know, give your goblins plus one, plus one, try and find those cards that give goblins that ability, uh, where you can, you know, enhance the goblin uh, archetype in this cube. Um... Yeah, enthralling Victor has built in, you know, gain control of opponent, a uh, target creature, and opponent controls with power two or less. Um, yeah, you can only control it till end of turn, but you know, still having all that built in is kind of cool. Moving on to the five drops, we have the charging monster star, monster star, <laughs> uh, five five with haste and trample. Uh, we have the uh, cold Dotha Phoenix, which, um, yeah, you know, does rely on the the metal craft so you do have to have three uh, artifacts and you can only activate it on your upkeep but uh yeah you can return the the phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield which is you know really cool if you do go artifacts in in red um moving on to the six six drops for red uh we have that mountain cycling so in this case it has the built-in pump effect where you spend one red you know you can use it multiple times and you know a char tooth Cougar gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. So, you know, again, follows that uh, cycling as far as the, the theme of the cube, including in that in all the colors. Now, non-creatures. We have 23 non-creatures as far as red goes. And we have some quintessential removal, like uh, Lightning Bolts, Shock, um, you know, Sheet and Fire. Uh, we also have things like Thud, if you wanted to go, you know, the crazy Thud build. 
uh, you know, fling over here following Thud. Um, <laughs> if you want to get crazy in the cube, uh, you know, Lightning Strike. We have some enchantments over here with, um, you know, Madcap skills, uh, you know, Flame of Keld. You know, if you want to go the aggro build, um, you know, dump all of your creatures and then you can refill your hand. Um, and then have a, a bunch of burst damage uh, for the third chapter. Um, you know, again, another enchantment in Teal and Ollie's Crown. Um, we have some Goblin Generators, some Token Generators with Dragon Fodder and Krenko's Command. Moving on to the three drops, we have, you know, again, some more removal, Bombard, um, you know, uh, yeah, Direct Current, uh, some more Goblin Token Generators, Hordling Outburst, um, yeah, Hungry Flames, deal three damage to target creature two, and two damage to target player, uh, Mark of Mutiny, which is interesting, if you wanted to go, uh, you know, the, the Sacrifice build, you can gain control of target creature and opponent controls. Put a 1-1 counter, attack with it, and then maybe at the end, uh, your main phase 2, you can sacrifice it. Uh, maybe use a thud or a flank or something crazy, I don't know. Um, we have uh, Radiant Flames over here, which, uh, yeah, where X is the number of colors of mana spent to cast Radiant Flames. So, huh, yeah, so you can potentially deal 3 damage with that. It's kind of interesting design. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. You had to do three colors, though. Yeah, yeah. But again, it, it makes the board sweeper effects, uh, you know, kind of limited. And, you know, once once it does happen, they, they feel very powerful. But in this case, it is kind of conditional. You have to spend uh, three different colors to really make it really, you know, deal three damage to all creatures. Um, moving on to the four drops, we have, you know, Gravitic Punch, uh, Radiating Lightning, which... Uh, can only affect target players, but it deals one damage to each uh, creature that player controls. Um, moving on to the yeah, there's no five mana plays, but as far as six mana plays for non-creatures, we have this token generator. Put four one one red devil creature tokens on the battlefield, and they have whenever this creature dies, it deals one damage to target creature or player. I really like that card. Uh, just you know, and also the art is really cool. But uh, yeah, so yeah, now let's take a look at the green part of the cube. So we have 31 creatures. As far as one drops, we're gonna see a lot of ramp. So things like Arbor Elf, a Avicen's Pilgrim, Lanawar Elves. Um, I really like this uh, Ovia Pashiri. I, I just think it's kind of a, a lot going on, but you know, just interesting card design. So we have, you know, the stereotypical as far as you know green uh, goes. We're gonna have the ramp, big creatures, uh, kind of effects. So you know, again, we have things like uh, more ramp, Druid of the Cal, Elfham Druid, um, Deathcap Cultivator. We have um, some other cards in here like uh, Crawl Harpooner from Guilds of Ravnica, um, Untamed Kavu, which can fill, you know, not only the two drop but also the five drop with its kicker. Um, yeah, some uh, you know Primal Druid. If it dies, you can search your, uh, your library for a basic land. Um, so yeah, some decent two drops to ramp you up. As far as three drops, we have you know District Grit Guide to you know get more lands. We have um, a Reclamation Sage, you know, giving you that. Uh, you know, uh, destroy target artifact or enchantment flexibility. Um, we have a jungle born pioneer over here, which can create a one one hex proof. So if you want to go maybe auras, maybe like a green, white auras or something like that, you can put your um, enchantments, uh, you know, aura effects on your one one blue hex proof, uh, you know, uh, merfolk. Um, we have things like Rishkar, which I think is pretty sweet. Moving on into the four drops, we have Beast Whisperer, um, another token generator, an Ambassador Oak with uh, you know it, it's a three three body, but also creates a one one. Um, we have you know Giant Spider, a two four with Reach, and I really like this Sirok the Hunt Caller. It's a five four, but at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you if you have control of creatures with total power of eight or greater, you can give one of your target creatures haste. So that's kind of interesting design. Moving on to the five drops, we have uh, Acidic Slime over here I really like because, you know, it enters the battlefield. Even though it's a five mana 2-2, two, two, it destroys target artifact, enchantment, or land. Uh, not creature, but, you know, artifact, enchantment, or land is, you know, kind of interesting. And it also has Death Touch built in. Um, we have another token generator with Crested Herd Caller. So if you want to go wide, five mana for a 3-3. Three, three. Um, also creates another 3-3 three, three dinosaur. And, yeah, kind of bad art with the Ridge Scale Tusker over here, but... Um, 
Yeah, so this is a 5-5, but, you know, it, it rewards you for going wide for each other creature you control because, it, you know, it enters the battlefield and you put a 1-1 one, one counter um, on it for each yeah other creature you control. So I like that design if you want to go with the go-wide strategy. Affection in Injury over here, good card because it has the built-in fight effect. Um, and then we also have Elfish Aberration over here with the 4-5 body, uh, but you can add 3 green so if you want to ramp up into something big um yeah there you go and also has a for built-in forest cycling in, in there as well and yeah we'll top off with the plock worm and i think there's one more yeah verdant force over here so uh yeah those are the the top end green creatures as far as the big old stompy creatures going on to the non-creatures we have 19 non-creatures in green um, as far as one mana plays, we only have, we're kind of limited over here, but, uh, yeah, we have one Prey Upon and one Giant Growth. Um, you know, as far as two drops, we have, uh, you know, we have Far Seek, um, and, you know, Fertile Ground as far as, uh, additional ramp. Um, uh, yeah, adds an additional, yeah, so, uh, you know, we, we have a, a variety of things over here. We have, uh, Rona's Last Stand, which is kind of interesting, a 5-4 green creature token, but on your next turn, lands don't untap. Um, we have an enchantment over here with Fist of Ironwood. Uh, yeah, you create two one one sapperlings and uh, the enchanted creature as trample. Uh, you know we have of course naturalize target artifact, destroy target artifact or enchantment, and rabid bite over here built in removal. Uh, they don't fight, but you know your creature deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. So if you have like a death toucher, that'd be really nice. Um. We we have some uh, you know additional ramp over here cultivate grow from the ashes, um, yeah lead the stampede can you know help fix your draws, any number of creature spells yeah, and going on yeah sprouting renewal a little bit of flexibility with the convoke um, but you can you know destroy target artifact or enchantment or generate a two two. Uh, as far as four drops a little bit more ramp with circuitous root. Uh, root. Uh, we have Hunt the Weak for removal, Return to Earth uh, for some more flexible remo removal. Um, yeah, Wild Onslaught over here. Yeah, on each creature you control. Yeah. So, you know, green has the, you know, ramp out uh, or, you know, the go wide strategy. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Faded Intervention over here. Put two, three, three green centaur enchantment creature tokens on the battlefield. Um, and if it's your turn, you can scry two. Again, you know, the go wide strategy is kind of the payoff with overcome. Creatures you control get plus two, plus two, and they gain trample. So you can see what, what green's all about in, in the cube. Um, now let's go on into multicolor. So looking at multicolor cards, we're going to include both the creatures and non creatures because, you know, as far as the cube tutor of, you know, the version six starter cube by. Card Kingdom, that's just how it was organized, and that's how I built this uh, video, or this presentation. So over here is Azorius. Um, you know, again, we're including both cre creature spells and non-creature spells, so we have a blink effect over here. We have, you know, Cloud Blazer, um, you know, 5 mana for a 2-2 flyer, but, you know, you gain the 2 life and you draw 2 cards. Uh, you know, the Spire Patrol, uh, an extra control effect. You know, we have Demir cards, um, some Guilds of Ravnica cards specifically with Artful Takedown, which I think has been a great removal card for the Demir uh, guild, uh, you know, Guilds of Ravnica from draft, as far as draft goes. Uh, you know, we have the House Guild Mage, uh, you know, Rags to Riches over here, which is, you know, kind of a board sweeper, but um, yeah, each opponent, you have to play the Aftermath for seven mana, but uh, yeah, each opponent chooses a creature he or she controls, you can control of those creatures. Um, yeah, going on into Rakdos, so we, we're not in the uh, Ravnica Allegiance yet, but as you can see here, there's a bunch of Rakdos cards from the previous sets. We have Unlicensed Disintegration, which I think is pretty sweet. Um, you know, Spike Jester, a 3-1 with Haste, you know, and, and Timurit, the Murder King, which I think is pretty interesting as far as the, you know, Sacrifice um, archetype in the cube goes. Going on into Gruul, we have, uh, yeah, Burning Tree Emissary. Uh, we have, you know, the Savage Vent Maw, which is kind of like that Dominaria, uh, well, I forgot what it was, what her, what her name is, or, 
you know, the one that anytime you attack and you have a bunch of other creatures that attack with it, you generate mana. But that's kind of essentially what Savage Vent Maw is as well. It's a 4-4 flyer, but you can, you know, generate a ton of mana. Um, over here, Clan Defiance gives you some flexibility as far as what you want to do. Deal a bunch of damage. Deal X damage. So, again, you could use that Savage Vent Maw into a Clan Defiance if you have a bunch of mana up. Um, moving on into Selesnia, we have, you know... Some great cards over here. We have, um, uh, you know, Ledev Champion, which can generate its own tokens. We have Conclave Cavalier, which once it dies, it, it uh, creates two, two, two uh, Elf Knight to uh, creature tokens. Yeah, and called the Conclave, which is just a 3 3 for two mana, which is pretty solid. Moving on into Orzov. I really like the Orzov because. We have some control effects over here with um, Pillory of the Sleepless, so can't attack or block enchanted creature, and the owner of that creature will lose one life. Um, so, you know, you kind of slowly uh, drain them. <laughs> um, Sin Collector, I really like the design of this one as well. So once it enters the battlefield, your opponent, uh, well, yeah, they reveal their hand, and you choose instant or sorcery and exile it. Um, yeah, and hidden stockpile at the beginning of your instep. If a permanent control left with the revolt, you create a 1-1 one, one, uh, servo creature, and it's an enchantment, so uh, you can also sacrifice a creature and scry one, so maybe you can build a uh, kind of a unique control build with Orzov with that card. Um, Golgari with, you know, Poison Tip Archer gives you the payoffs of any time a creature dies, each opponent loses one life. Um, I really like Reaper of the Wilds because it's a 4-mana four 4-5, four and... Just a lot going on in this card because, you know, you can give it Death Touch, you can give it Hexproof. Really cool design, just seems like it's going to be a pain to deal with. Um, yeah, and the uh, Brood Butcher, which is devoid of any colors, but uh, when it enters the battlefield, you put a 1-1 colorless creature token, and uh, yeah, you can use that as ramp, or you can sacrifice a creature with its, you know, you, know, you got you to pay the one uh, black and one green, and you give a target creature negative two, negative two, so kind of has that, you know, sacrifice uh, removal effect in it. So you can, you know, sacrifice one of your one ones or, you know, one of your creatures uh, and, you know, target one of your opponent's two toughness creatures. Uh, Simic over here, I really like Coiling Oracle because it's a snake elf druid, so a lot going on as far as uh, what, what it is, um, but yeah, you can... Uh, yeah, you look at the top of your library, and if it's a land card, put it on the battlefield. Otherwise, put it into your hand. Um, Bounty of Luxa. This one I had to read a couple of times, but it's just another kind of ramp card. Um, and the Simic Sky Swallower has Shroud, so it can't be the target of spells or abilities, including yours. But it's a 7-mana 6-6 six, six flying uh, trample with essentially hexproof, but you know with Shroud, it also includes your own spells. But uh, yeah, I really like the art because it's... Yeah, it's a Leviathan, but looks like something more than a Leviathan. Looks like a de demon Leviathan. <laughs> All right, and going on into Ezit, we have the the quintessential Drakes going on that are really popular right now. Uh, Enigma Drake and Crackling Drake gives you the the instant and sorcery payoffs by using a bunch of instant instants and sorceries. You can uh, increase the power of these creatures. And Hypothesis, which is just a great. You know, five mana, draw two cards, and if you want to discard a non-land, you can deal four damage. And Boros, we have uh, Integrity Intervention, so, you know, some flexibility. You can use it as a Lightning Helix, deal three damage, and you gain three life, or you can use it as a 2-2 two -two combat trick. Sky Knight Legionnaire, three mana, 2-2 two -two Flyer, with haste. And Tiana's Ship uh, Caretaker, I'm not a big fan of this card, but, um, yeah, maybe it might be really good in the Aura and Equipment Archetype. Uh, maybe I'm just, you know underrating this card but uh whenever an aura equipment you control is put into the battlefield uh put into a graveyard from the battlefield you may return that card back into your hand at the beginning of your next instep so yeah maybe that's kind of a, a core card as far as the aura and equipment archetype as far as this cube goes and going on into the creatures um the, the colors colorless creatures all right so let's get into the colorless creatures as far as this cube we're also going to include the vehicles. I know the vehicles need to be crewed, but I just wanted to throw it in the creatures. As, I don't know. I just feel like they, they kind of fit in, in into this slot. So, um, yeah, we'll start off with, you know, Hedron uh, Crawler, some ramp, mannequin. Um, you know, we've got the Suspicious Bookcase, uh, Chamber Sentry from Gilza Ravnica. So if you want to play 
five color crazy uh, rainbow deck in your cube. You can make Chamber Sentry work. I actually was killed by a 5-5 Chamber Sentry in my Magic League, which is a casual, uh, you know, build a 30 card deck uh, Magic League, and yeah, it completely owned me. <laughs> um, yeah, he was playing a gate deck, and it was just supreme jank, but, you know, it worked. Um, and we also got a hard Kieran over here, in which, if you want to go the aggro crew 3 archetype, um, yeah, you know, Hardy Kieran was kind of a dominant force in the previous meta. Uh, so yeah, I'm sure as far as this cube goes, it could definitely help out in the uh, aggro archetype. Um, moving on to the three drops, we got Skittering Surveyor, Ensure Your Lands, um, Sky Scanner, uh, Ether Sphere Harvester. So if you want to go more defensive build with a life gain, you know, it's a 3 5 body, it only needs a crew one. Um, yeah, and we also got the Renegade Freighter over here. Which, uh, yeah, any time it attacks, it gets plus one, plus one, and trample, so it be essentially becomes a 5-4. Uh, only when it attacks, though. And does need to be crewed by two power. Moving on to the four drops for the colorless, we have, um, you know, the Juggernaut, which I, you know, it has to attack each combat, but it can be blocked by walls. I'm not sure how good that card is, May might want to take that one out, I'm just not a big fan of the, of that kind of card for four mana. Um, really like Drawers Familiar, though, with the Historic. Uh, ramp, they cost one less. Uh, Treasure Keeper is also really cool. You know, once it dies, you can reveal a non-land card uh, with Converted Man cost three or less, and you may play it. Um, and we also have some more vehicles over here, such as the Fleet Wheel Cruiser. Yeah, do do do. So this one, you know, automatically becomes uh, a creature when it enters the battlefield. Um, and Untethered Express, which whenever it attacks, you can put a one-one counter. So you know, essentially every time it's crewed for one, uh, you know, it just constantly gets bigger and bigger. And also has built-in trample, which I think is pretty cool. And, yeah, it just goes straight into the seven drops. Uh, we have Meteor Golem, which, you know, general removal, which is great. Uh, you can put it in, in any deck. And then we also have this Mirror Battle Sphere, which I think is pretty hilarious, because just looking at the art, uh, it's just, it looks like a brain, but it's this giant rolling ball of mirror constructs which i think is just hilarious but essentially what it does is uh it's a seven mana four seven and when it enters the battlefield you generate four colorless one one to uh mirror artifact creature tokens and whenever it attacks you may tap any number of those untapped mirror creatures you control and if you do uh the battle sphere gets plus x plus zero uh, and deals x damage uh, to the player that you're attacking or planeswalker that you're attacking so, a lot going on in that, but, uh, yeah, it just seems like a good finisher. Um, going on into the non-creature spells, so we're going to mainly see artifacts in here. Things like Blood Tallow Candle, uh, Dark Steel Axe, which, you know, it is indestructible, but, uh, you know, if you want to go the, the Equipment Auras archetype. You know, we have some more things like um, Short Sword, Flare Husk, um, for for that kind of archetype, the Equipment or archetype. Uh we also have a little bit of control, uh, explosive uh, apparatus, uh, pacification array. Going on into the twos, um, we have prophetic prism, some color fixing, some more um, you know equipment with the jousting lance, torch gauntlet, uh, kite sail. Um, you know we have key to the city over here, which you know you discard a card, you know tap it, and up to one target creature can't be blocked. So uh, you know just some more interesting design. Um, and Guardian Idol over here, which, you know, kind of a, an additional ramp piece, but also can become a creature as well, if you need it to block. Going on into the threes, more equipment with, you know, sig 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 Sigiled Sword of Valoron, uh, you know, Strider Harness, got some more ramp with Manalith, um, Oraska Relic, uh, Pristine Talisman, Sears Lantern, so... Uh, a lot of ramping artifacts, but also, you know, some control stuff like Arcane Encyclopedia. Um, yeah, or our Moonglo Extract, which, you know, you can sacrifice it immediately and it deals two damage to target creature or player. And as far as four drops, uh, we have Icy Manipulator, which is another kind of control card. Um, I really like this Haunted Plate Mail uh, because it, it can become a creature in itself. Um, but you can only activate it if you control no no creatures. Um, the Oracle's Vault over here, which is kind of an interesting card design with putting brick counters on it. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, it, you know, just some extra four four mana plays. That, that's what it tops off at, uh, as far as the colorless. Now going on into the non-basic lands. All right, and let's let's finish off the cube with some non-basic lands. So you're gonna get all of the memorials. Um, you know, they each provide a, a various effect, like Memorial of Genius. You can use it in your control. Uh, you know, draw two cards later in the game. Uh, you're also going to get all these deserts as well, so you can cycle them. Um, essentially, if you draw a land later in the game, uh, these cycle lands could, you know, you can discard them and draw an additional card if you don't need it. We're going to have a bunch of fixing over here with the guild gates. So, yeah, we have all the guild gates right here. You're also going to get um, kind of the, the enter the battlefield tapped lands. With you know Highland Lakes, Timber Gorge, uh, Submerged Boneyard, etc. Uh, and finishing off, we have some um, you know uh, flexibility lands as far as you know if you want to play the five color or maybe a three color deck. Things such as Shimmering Gr Grotto, Unknown Shores, Painted Bluffs, Gateway Plaza, uh, or you know the Terramorphic Expanse, Evolving Wilds. Some you know a lot of color fixing right here. Uh, we also get one Cradle of the Accursed. Uh, which essentially becomes a 2-2 two -two creature token later in the game. But yeah, that's uh, that's the end of the cube. Alright, so, you know, looking at Cube Tutor over here, um, as far as the version 6 of the Card Kingdom Starter Cube, you can actually see this in the link, uh, I'll link it in the description below, but yeah, this is the Cube Tutor, so you can actually go through all of the, the cards itself. So looking at the design of the cube, we have, you know, very equal. I mean, that's kind of how, if you want to build a cube, you want to make sure everything's represented fairly. Um, so that way, you know, it's not like there's a bunch of, you know, it's not lopsided to one color. Uh, everything is kind of well balanced over here. I, I would definitely like to see more multicolored cards because I think multicolored cards add uh, a lot more flavor to the, to the cube. But, um, you know, I can understand why they would mainly stick to kind of, you know, the main colors. Uh, but yeah, we have a, uh, a ton of artifacts as well, so maybe if you do want to go more multicolored, you can sacrifice some of your, uh, you know, take away some of these um, artifact cards and put in some more multicolored cards, maybe like two more of, of each of the guilds. I think it would be pretty flavorful. Um, but yeah, uh, overall, I think as far as the cube design, it's, it's a great template to, you know, to see where you want to start as far as building your own cube, but as far as me, uh, just looking at it, uh, you know, studying this cube, um, going to take some in inspiration, but I just wanted to see, uh, you know, kind of study the, the, this cube and kind of just better my own cube, my own cube design. Uh, but yeah, I, I've definitely taken a lot of kind of lessons from this cube and yeah, just, um, kind of wanted to share my thoughts, uh, taking a look at this cube study. Again, I'm not really sponsored, uh, or anything. I'm not going to buy this product, but uh, as far as an, an introductory cube, um, I think it's a great starting place. And also, just for me, myself, um, kind of just studying it, uh, learning from it, and, you know, applying, you know, some of the design uh, as far as my cube. So that's kind of the point of this whole thing. But yeah, hope you guys enjoy the video. And yeah, I hope uh, this whole thing gave you a better insight into this product if you are interested in buying it.